Welcome back to another segment of Terminating Low Voltage Cables. Again, I'm Ron with Ideal Industries, and welcome to the shop and the channel. Hey, in this segment, which is segment three of the Smart Home uh, series of videos, uh, in this segment, I'm going to basically talk about um, how you get wire from the side of the home to a low voltage panel, and then basically how do you go about laying that out to the different outlets in the home, and explain in these low voltage panels to you briefly. So, hang on here. We're going to talk uh, about a lot of different things, right? Uh, so, uh, <laughs> one of those things we got to do is talk about how do you get the cable from the outside of the house to the inside of the house to a panel. Now, new construction, obviously, that's easier to do than it is for remodel work, but you got to find a way. And um, we start on the outside of a building at what's referred to as a D-mark. And a demarcation, or D-mark, D-mark, is essentially a spot on the side of the home that the utility uh, will hook up to. You know, it used to be way back in the day the phone guy owned all the phone wire in your house and all the phones, but today they stop on the outside of the house. So you got a demark for everything. You got your your uh, electrical demark is the electrical meter. Your gas meter is the gas demark. You know, for phone it could be just a porcelain terminal stuck up underneath an eave someplace. But in most cases, especially in the last, oh, say, 30 years or so, we've been putting these plastic boxes someplace on the side of the home, these gray plastic boxes. So I think you, you're probably kind of familiar with them. The same thing with your cable TV guy. He puts his own uh, D mark on the side of the home. And they always ground their wire right there as it comes in the building. So we ground our cable as it comes in. And that generally is their responsibility, but you need to make sure it's been grounded properly. We pull wire up. Uh, from there on into the building and the standard would recommend that we install what are called auxiliary disconnect outlets inside the building and the auxiliary disconnect outlet is a basically just a, a, a basic connection is all it has to be and it's a testing point inside the building for service so say for instance I got a telephone problem in the house and I don't know if the problem is in the house or outside the house and this is usually sitting pretty close by where my low voltage panel is, and it might be actually in it. Uh, and it's a connection that I can actually go downstairs and you know stick my tester or plug my phone into that. And, you know, if I get a dial tone at that point, I know the problem's in the house because I got service to hear. Uh, and it also is kind of meant for apartment complexes and things like that where you know the tenant can say, I don't want the cable or the satellite or the phone or whatever service it is, and actually physically disconnect themselves from it inside the apartment without having to run all the way out maybe to a D-mark to do that, which in an apartment can be pretty far away. Now, then we're going to pull wire into the actual panel itself, okay? Now, there are a number of manufacturers that make low voltage panels today. And uh, this is just one brand here. This happens to be Leviton's, and they're one of our kind of partners we work with a lot. And uh, Leviton, and, what, and once you get used to this panel, you can walk up to almost anybody else's panel and go, oh, okay. Um, and when we install panels uh, like this, um, we like to put them in climate-controlled environments. So no attics, no garages, no exterior storage locations. And part of that is the hot and cold. The electronics in here maybe may not like that. But uh, the real problem is humidity problems, believe it or not. Uh, all the wire in here is a copper, essentially, and copper is going to corrode over time. And it's one of these things where your TV picture gets a little worse, and every year it gets a little worse. And, you know, 10, 15 years later down the road, we've got to come in here and cut the wires off and maybe re-terminate the darn thing. And that's why a lot of the industry has gone to these compression uh, coax connectors to uh, eliminate because, again, they, they have some O-rings in them and some provide some water tightness. Um, so that's one of the panels, and like I said, once you get your arms around this one, you can uh, uh, understand just about anybody's panel. But one nice thing about these panels, especially the way we've got this one set up, is, and, and we'll go through a series of videos to make sure you, you understand this, so look for them uh, for the insides of this panel. But there are uh, some Category 5 cables coming in here to the into the panel from outside, and one of those wires coming in is my phone wire. So I, uh, my incoming foam wire comes to this big board over here, and I got this little board and a bunch of category cables coming off of it. They feed outlets, so the little board over here feeds an outlet. The big board uh, has foam hooked to it. And again, I've got grade two wiring out at my jacks. So if I want an outlet in a room to be a phone, I'll take one of the little gray jumpers that the panel comes with and plug it into the outlet, which feeds this wire here, which is say bedroom one. And I want that to be phone. Depending on where I plug it into the phone board, I can give that outlet in that room phone. And my customer can then plug 
again, a standard phone out, uh, plug into my Cat5 jack in a room, and I got phone at the outlet in the room. And if I want to make changes to the outlet in the room as far as what phone line it gets, I just change this on this board over here, and I can give the outlet something else. So it's nice and easy to make quick changes. And you never have to go to the outlet to really make any big, big changes. But what's neat about this is it all could be used for data too. And so say Johnny finally moves out the house. Well, I could remove this and not no longer give this outlet in the room phone. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that. But I do need data. So, but at the outlet in the back here in the panel, I'm going to take a Cat5 patch cord and plug it into that same outlet that fed the outlet in the room phone. But now I'll plug it into my router or switch, it's also in my Lebanon panel. And uh, now that's got high speed internet going to it, and it will then take high speed internet to the outlet in the room, and I can plug my computer into the outlet in the room. So you can kind of see the nice thing about having these structured wiring panels. They provide a lot of versatility for us without having to do a ton of rewiring inside the home. So panels are good things. And we'll get deeper into that panel in another series. All right, from the panel now. We pull wire to the different outlets of the house, okay? And again, we're going to home run to all these outlets, okay? All that wire. Now, the wire in the wall, okay? They give us a maximum length distance of 90 meters, which is uh, 295 feet, okay? 295 feet. Now, in a single-family home, never going to hit this number. Apartment complex, yeah, I could hit that number. Uh, so uh, be aware of the fact it is pretty long, and you got to be wondering, well, who sets up the 90-meter rule? Where does that number come from? Because it isn't a phone guy, because we can go further than that with phones. Cable guy can go past that distance, too. We just have to probably amp the signal. So there's ways around things, obviously. And where it comes from are actually people who make these routers and switches that tie computers together. That's where the number comes from. And this is the same distance limitation we get in commercial data uh, networking. So the residential standard and the commercial standard sometimes say the same thing, and one thing is distance. And so for data networking, our distance limit is 295. And if, if we go past that number, we would then have to put another router or switch out there to go further uh, with it. But that's where the number actually comes from. And you know what? In most applications, uh, you're never going to hit this number in a single family home. Most runs in a house are probably 50, 60 feet. Uh, so this is more than enough. And then, um, you know, you're going to have wiring going out to the device out here, a computer, or uh, could be a phone, uh, could be a TV, you know, could be something, you know, um, you know, have a device out here. So we have wire from here to here, too. And, you know, when we do our cross-connected in our panel, there'll be some jumper wires someplace in here, too. So there's some jumper wires back here in the panel as well. Uh, so the standards give us another 10 meters of cabling. So 90 meters in, uh, in the wall, 10 meters outside the wall for a total of 100 meters, and that's 328 feet, okay? And that's the maximum length of our runs that we have. And again, we're going to home run wires to all the different outlets in the house, and uh, from the panel, back here to the DMARC, they give you another 50 meters, okay, so uh, as well. So from the DMARC out here to that furthest device in here, that distance can be 150 meters, or I think it's 492 feet is what that is. And that's the max distances they're allowed to uh, pull within the building. So. Uh, as long as you stay within those guidelines, everything should work all right. And that's how I would go about getting the cable from the side of the home, uh, running it into a low voltage panel of some sort, and from there I'm going to start home running all the outlets in the rooms and, and feed my different devices in the building. Uh, so hope that helps uh, laying out your uh, low voltage panel and your uh, home as well. And uh, look for the next segment. We'll talk, very, uh, we'll talk a lot about what goes on inside that panel. And thanks for coming to another segment of Terminating Low Voltage Cables. Uh, I'm Ron with Ideal Industries, and again, we'll see you next time.